Hi there. I'd like to work a problem dealing with sampling distributions for proportions. Half the battle in these problems is trying to figure out what all the, the key players are, what all the, the values are, so that you can use a, a formula or two and a, a setup so that you know how to answer the probability question. So that's really what I want to focus on in this problem, sort of teasing out the important details in the problem. Here we go. Newly released Census Bureau data from 2017 shows that 20% of U.S. residents speak a language other than English. Suppose you have a random sample of 400 U.S. residents. What is the probability that in this sample of 400 U.S. residents that less than 17.5% will speak a language other than English? So um, let me start using some highlighting tools here. And um, start highlighting as we read. So we get this first bit of information here as I read. The Census Bureau says that 20% of U.S. residents speak a language other than English. Okay, so that's interesting and probably reliable, hopefully, fact there. The next piece of information says that we have a random sample of 400 U.S. residents. Highlighted that in green. It goes on to say, finally, the last bit of information, in that sample of 400 U.S. residents, that less than 17.5% will speak a foreign language, or speak a language other than English, I should say. So we have sort of three big highlights here. The first one, well, first of all, I'd like to, you know, we see we have 2% given and then what's clearly a sample size. And I think from this, we can sort of start to, to fill out and label what things are. So what I want to do first is to talk about what the success here is here. We've done this in a lot of other, our face-to-face -face lectures is like, what's the success in this problem? So um, our success here is um, speaking is what all of the percents seem to lean towards speaking a language other than English. Okay, that's what our quote success is. It's important to talk about that so that we can correctly identify P, Q, and all the other values in this problem. So we see the information in yellow. 20% of U.S. residents speak a language other than English. That is a number we were given from the Census Bureau, sort of a big uh, nationwide value. And then later in this sort of turquoise blue, we get a different percent that says 17.5% will speak a language other than English. And that's attached to the smaller set of 400 U.S. residents. So you can see the one in yellow is for a population and the one in turquoise is for a sample. So as we start to fill these out, we'll see that P we can say here is equal to 0.20. Q, the complement of P, those are the individuals that do not speak a, a language other than English. That would be 0 0.80, 80%. N, our sample size, that's the bit of information in green above. They clearly stated that they were using a sample of 400. And P hat, that's our sample proportion, and that's the bit in turquoise, 0 0.175. So we have these identified, and you just have to look for the different values. One is going to be bigger. The second one, the second percent you'll get, or another percent you'll get, is, is usually attached to the sample um, so that you can distinguish which one's P and which one's um, P hat. Okay, so we know with sampling distributions for proportions that what goes beneath the middle of the distribution and the position of the mean is P. Put P there. And then we have to do a bit of legwork. If you remember, we've got to find the standard deviation for this. And we have to use this formula here. Now, I'm going to fill this in. This is sort of a plug and chug exercise once we've identified everything. All right, 0.20 times 0.80. It's a bit messy, but I think you can read it. And of course, divide that by 400. 
Now that is a bit of a calculation. I'm going to use Desmos, as you've seen me do in class. I'm going to call that square root first. I'm going to put this fraction underneath there, and I'm going to type in exactly what I just wrote down. over 400. So you can see it looks exactly like what I wrote on the, the screen. And if I look at that, that equals to 0 0.02. Keep that in mind because now I'm going to go back and I'm going to label that. That value is equal to 0 0.02. Now I love to draw a fully detailed picture here. So I'm going to take that standard deviation that we just computed and I'm going to label the graph. So I'm going to go back, Oops, sorry about that, a lot going on with my, my wrist hitting the wrong spot, and I'm going to label, and I'm going to have 0 0.18 here, I'm subtracting 0 0.02, 0 0.16, and 0 0.14. Now I could label the right hand side, I guess it won't hurt. So this is our sampling distribution. It's very particular to a sample size of 400. Um, and of course, that's what we have. So I have now uh, identified the mean of this distribution, the standard deviation, sort of what I like to say, the, the width of it, uh, the tick mark size here, as I put three convenient tick marks out to the edge of the model. And now I want to come in finally and utilize our friend p hat. Um, I haven't used it at all up to this point. Um, now this is the point in which I use it because I want to know specifically how how likely it would be if let me just uh, use a different color here and this will be 0 0.175 there's p hat it's it gets plotted along the axis where it belongs on the number line so it's not part of building this it just gets put into this model where P is 0.2 and Q is 0.8. And of course, here it is. And I want to find a probability, which is an area under the curve. And it says that they will, that less than the 17.5. So I'm going to shade over here to my left. And legitimately, that is my answer. That is a gorgeous sketch of my answer. But as you know, I'm going to want an actual numerical value. So I'm going to go to uh, StatCrunch to help myself out with that. I'll just have a stat crunch window open. I'll go to stat calculators, normal. And for the mean, I will put in 0 0.20. For the standard deviation, I'll put in uh, 0 0.02. These are things we, ca we calculated a second ago. And, and then in this box, this is that stopping point along the horizontal axis of our model is 0 0.175. I realize it says X there, but that's just a generic thing for the normal calculator. We are literally plotting P hat there. And of course, we want to shade to the left. And this default setting is perfect. And we get that. And we can see right there in that picture, that is exactly what we drew on the other page. With the exception, there's red shading and I, I shaded in blue. But that is the area to the left of 0 0.175. So that probability is 0 0.106. If you can see they're rounding to three digits. Let me go back to my um, problem. And the probability that in a sample of 400, less than 17.5% of them would speak a language other than English is 0, excuse me, 0 0.106. That's our probability. That is the area in that shaded region. Um, so there's about a 10% a chance that less than 17.5% of individuals in this sample would speak a language other than English. I hope that was helpful. I, I do realize now I have a part B. Let's address that before I, I close out this video. And I love to address this. It's a rather easy one to address because we have this model above. It says here, if 25% of a sample could speak a language other than English, 
or of, of the sample, the sample of 400, could speak a language other than English, would you be surprised? Explain, maybe use some statistics or statistical reasoning to support your answer. So what I want to do here, I'm just going to put it in red. So this is part B in red. Uh, I'm going to put the 0.25 in right here. That's where it would be. And think about that. Where is, is it with respect to the center of this model? If we count the number of tick marks, one, two, and a bit. So it is well over two standard deviations away from the center. So would we be surprised? My answer would be yes, because it is more than 2SD. Sorry, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a from the mean. You could also do a z-score here, um, a couple other approaches, but since we had this model already perfectly drawn out, I could just look at it and count the standard deviation. So that z-score in D would be bigger than 2, as we know, and that would be a surprising finding. Hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you need any more videos.